Have you ever ridden a roller coaster and wondered, what are those things I'm feeling? Well, those are forces, and roller coasters depend largely on forces to be fun and thrilling. So I'll show you what types of forces are used on roller coasters and where you would experience them. First, welcome to 808 Coaster Life. If you're new to this channel and you love roller coasters and other theme park related stuff, please consider subscribing. In case you can't tell, I've been looking forward to this video for a while. First, you may be wondering, why do forces exist on coasters? Well, in the most simple way I can explain it, basically, every acceleration is caused by a force. So of course, you may be thinking a change in speed is an acceleration, therefore it is caused by a force, and you're right with that. But that's not the only way acceleration occurs. Any curve on a roller coaster causes a component of acceleration towards the center of that curve. This is called centripetal acceleration. But because of inertia, your body feels like it's being pushed away from the center of curvature. Just like how water doesn't escape a bucket when you swing it in a circle. A centripetal force causes this acceleration, and the force can be exerted on you from the bottom of your seat the side of your seat, or even the restraint in some cases. We'll get into all of that in a little bit. Well, then you may be wondering, how do we measure roller coaster forces? Well, we use this thing called G-force. And some of you may be thinking, wait, isn't that a measurement of acceleration? And you are correct there. But see, the thing is, the actual force you experience on a roller coaster changes from person to person. So since G-force is a measurement of acceleration, it's more universal because most people will experience the same amount of G-force at any point. How it works is that one G is one times your weight. So if you're sitting in a chair, which let's be honest, you most likely are, then you're experiencing one G. Therefore, if you're subjected to five Gs of force, you're experiencing five times your weight. Isn't that crazy? For the math people watching this, the rest of you can skip ahead a little. Calculating G-force is as easy as taking your acceleration and dividing it by the acceleration due to gravity. This value is usually either 9.8 meters per second squared or 32.2 feet per second squared for you Americans. Starting with vertical forces, the force from the bottom of the train on you is what we like to call positive Gs, or just positives. So it feels like you're getting pressed down into your seat. You will experience this on valleys, bank turns, and inversions, especially vertical loops. The human body can comfortably withstand up to four to five Gs, while a couple coasters reach up to six Gs. This is because too much positive Gs will make riders gray out, which is where you get tunnel vision, or even worse, blackout, which is where you temporarily lose vision. Your vision will come back once the valley is done. Gray now can also be minimized by having enough food and drink before you ride. The opposite of positives are, you guessed it, negative Gs, commonly referred to as Time. This is the force from your restraint on you, so it'll feel like you're rising out of your seat. If a coaster goes fast enough over a crest, hill, or drop, you'll experience airtime. The crests don't have to be upright, as some wave turns and outer bank turns can also provide airtime. There are two main types of airtime. Floater airtime usually ranges from 0.5 to negative 1 Gs, and this airtime usually is much more sustained. Meanwhile, ejector airtime ranges from negative 1 to negative 2 Gs, and these usually are much quicker, because too much negative Gs cause is red out, so we never really go beyond negative 2 Gs. And if you experience airtime that you think is a bit of both, then that's what we call flow ejector airtime, because, you know, it's a combination of floater and ejector, you know? Airtime tends to be the most scary force since it feels like you're getting flung out of your seat. But as long as you're tall enough to ride, and you pull the restraint all the way down on you, and you have limbs, you'll be fine. Airtime has become my favorite force I like to experience on coasters. There are some times when you're upside down and a train doesn't have enough speed to provide positive Gs, so you lift out of your seat. This is called hang time, and because of restraints becoming safer, recent coasters are now featuring more hang time moments. This is still a little different from true weightlessness, which is zero Gs. This you can feel on zero G rolls or zero G stalls. Are you doing okay so far? Well, if you made it up to this point, I'd be curious to know down in the comments whether or not this is too nerdy. When the side of the coaster seat exerts a force on you, you would experience lateral, so it feels like you're getting pushed into the side. This is the most common G-force people experience. Whenever a driver takes a flat turn a little too quickly, you feel laterals. The same thing applies to coasters. You'll mostly experience this on wooden coasters and wild mice. 
Laterals are generally more uncomfortable to experience compared to other forces, hence why the maximum humans can comfortably take is only 1.8 lateral Gs. Because of this, designers bank the track inward to convert lateral Gs into positive Gs, making it feel more comfortable. That's why most coasters use banking on the turns. Modern coasters still use laterals, but much more sparingly. It is to sort of spice up the ride. I would say a variation on this is what we like to call just whip, which is where a change in banking is sudden enough to produce a torque or rotational force on your body. If vertical G's push you up or down, and lateral G's push you side to side, then linear G's would have to push you forward and back, right? Correct. So of course, when you're speeding up, which we call just acceleration, there's a force from the back of your seat on you. So it feels like you're getting pushed back. As one would hopefully expect, you're most likely to feel acceleration Gs on launches. Yes, coasters do speed up when going down a drop, but since they accelerate at gravity's rate at best, you would never notice it. The fastest accelerating launch used to be Dota Dompa at FujiQ Highline, which pulled an average of 3.27 linear Gs before it closed. The current record holder is now Stealth at Thor Park, which can pull 2.03 linear Gs. Of course, on every roller coaster, you gotta slow it down before you bring it back into the station. This we call deceleration. And you would experience this on, well, brakes. So because the force is coming from the restraint back on you, it feels like you're getting launched forward. This is also a very common G-force, as there are many situations in which one would slam on their brakes when driving a car. One thing you should note is that the duration of a G-force definitely impacts how you feel it. As a result, higher G-forces tend to last a shorter amount of time compared to milder G-forces. This is because the more sustained a G-force is, the more you'll feel it. That's why grayouts happen on long stretches of positive G-forces rather than short bursts of high positive Gs. Coaster fans tend to use the terms forceful and intense pretty interchangeably, but forcefulness tends to be applied when a coaster has a lot of strong positive Gs while intensity tends to be applied when a coaster has any strong force. Well, now you should be able to recognize all the different forces you may experience on a coaster. So when you ride your next coaster, try to pay attention to the different forces you'll experience. If you wanna know what is the most intense coaster I've ridden, check out the card up there. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite force to experience on coasters, and what is the most intense roller coaster you've ridden. Here's some other videos you should watch. If you enjoyed this one, consider leaving a like, and maybe even subscribe. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you next time. Oh,